Hello! Today's stories come from r slash am I the jerk. We have three stories today, but the first is a double decker of fun and escalates way beyond what you might expect at first. It starts with, am I the jerk for saying my mom named me like a Mad Libs? My first name, Waverly, is the street my mom grew up on. My middle name is where I was conceived. My last name is a noun. It feels like a Mad Lib. I've never felt any strong way towards my name other than wishing I had a girlier name when I was a kid. But I've always felt a little frustrated at the fact that my mom named me like one of those security question scams on Facebook. My siblings all were named a bit more normally. Anyway, my sister is pregnant and didn't want a baby shower, so we had a nice dinner for her three days ago instead. We got onto the topic of names, and my family starts giving their input, and I tell her, You could always take mom's approach and just do a Mad Lib. My sister laughs and my mom throws herself on the table and bursts into tears. She starts wailing about how she didn't know I hated my name so much. How awful she is as a parent. How I should just change my name and be done with her. My siblings and I console her, or try to, and after like 20 minutes with no success, my sister tells me I should leave so I don't upset her anymore. My boyfriend of three years is fuming the whole way home, saying I knew that would upset her and I put him in an awkward spot. He's been frustrated with me since. My sister also says I did it on purpose to upset her. We've always had a rocky relationship and that I ruined her dinner because I was jealous of her for having a baby. I'm not. My other siblings have stayed mostly out of it but told me to apologize to our mom, which I did. I called and told her how sorry I was and that I really did like my name. And she starts saying, I don't need to lie to spare an old woman's feelings, and that she should be apologizing to me for saddling me with such a burden. I tried some more, but she just kept wallowing. Ever since, she's been making three to four Facebook posts per day about how she's a bad mom and grateful that her children still love her despite all her failures. My family has started reaching out, trying to be sure everything is okay. I didn't mean to say it maliciously. I genuinely harbor no ill will towards my mother. I feel like everything has spiraled out of control and I feel like this is some weird revenge that she's trying to do. But was I actually mean enough to deserve the revenge? Was I really that out of line? Am I the jerk for saying my mom named me like a Mad Libs? Hmm, it's tough to render a verdict when it feels like there's something missing. And if there isn't anything missing, then definitely not the jerk. Sounds like one of those awkward moments where a joke hits a little too close to home. We all know those. But the next level reaction from the mom? Way over the top. Let's head to the comments where OP provides lots of extra details. Risk and Reward said, Not the jerk. You made a joke and your mom was a drama queen about it. She's made this all about her and is reaping in a whole lot of sympathy for it. It's bizarre for everyone to just jump to her defense like that. Does she do this sort of thing a lot? OP replied, She pulls the I'm a bad parent card a lot but never sincerely and never to this extreme. When I was a teen, I wanted to go to a punk concert and we had a huge fight about whether or not I should be allowed to go. When I wasn't allowed to go, I got angry and she starts going on, I'm sorry I'm such a horrible parent. I'm sorry I won't let my daughter be murdered miles from home. I'm sorry I don't want my baby to be kidnapped. Call CPS. I'm winning worst mother of the year over here. She was genuinely very upset, but she was not sincere in feeling like she was a bad mom. The most broken boy replied. Next time she pulls that crap and says, sorry I'm such a bad parent, just say, not as sorry as I am, with a dead face. Vertical Perception said, not the butthole, and your mother sounds like the one who was jealous about your sister's baby and all the attention she's getting, not you. You made an innocent joke. Unless you regularly harp on this and have been bitterly complaining to all your siblings for years, your mother's reaction and theirs seems a bit disproportional. Your boyfriend also sounds a bit self-absorbed making it about himself. However, that so many people have issues with it makes me really wonder whether you haven't been like a dog with a bone on this subject and even your boyfriend is tired of it. I lied, I'm dying inside, said, I feel like there's something missing here. How often do you bring this up? Has your mother said that she doesn't like you saying it before? OP replied, as a kid, I mentioned a few times that there were no other kids with my name and my mom would always lecture me about how being unique was better than blending in. That's really been the extent of our interaction over my name. I really grew out of the misplaced feeling and developed a more significant ambivalence. And now for the update where things take a turn. 
update. Hey everyone, it's the artist formerly known as Waverly. Just kidding, I didn't change my name. Did change my whole life around though. I wanted to post this update for a lot of reasons, but mainly to express my gratitude. I didn't have a lot of friends at the time, and most of them were my boyfriend's friends. I truly didn't feel like I had anyone else to go to about this. So I'm so thankful for everyone who took the time to reply to my original post and provide insight. It was a lot to sift through and honestly, really painful. It felt like I was finally being validated after years of gaslighting myself. I always had a feeling that something was wrong, but pushed it aside for the sake of being part of the family. The period after I posted was truly one of the lowest of my life, but also one of the most empowering. A lot of people told me to cut out my boyfriend, but I didn't see the point. I didn't understand the accusations of narcissism. But when I sat down with him, explained how badly him siding with my mom hurt me, how it hurt to watch him turn against me when I needed the support, his response was, you did this to yourself. That was the light bulb moment I needed. We broke up. I moved in with my brother for a little while to get back on my feet. There were a lot of recommendations to go no contact with my mom, but I had a really hard time with the idea of it. Talking it over with her was mostly unsuccessful. She kept degrading herself and sending me all these backhanded apologies that made me feel worse. Everything ended in me apologizing. My sister had her baby. Whole family went to visit her and she told us the name. Top 10, very traditional. My mom made a comment about me scaring her out of exercising creativity. Without any crocodile tears or hysterics, it was pure hostility from her and it was another light bulb. I brushed it off, apologized to my sister, stuck around for another 30 minutes, and that was it. That was the last time I spoke to my mom. My brother harassed me about it, so I moved out of his place and into an extended stay hotel. I got a job a few states away, got an apartment, packed up my life, and pretty much entirely started over. I haven't spoken to any of my family members in almost a year. There has been a lot of therapy, as recommended. It's been a painful, sad, lonely, and frustrating experience but I'm also so much better off. I have new friends, I actually like my job a lot better now, and I'm creating my own weird little family with my pets, a family that I'm really a part of. Again, thank you to everyone who provided input. Not exactly the happiest update, but one for the better. I'm gonna stick with not the jerk on this one. The extra details and the mom's consistent, unreasonable response really drove home the ruling in my mind. Let's head to the comments, which offer a lighter note, with people having some fun with family naming conventions. Howling Wind said, Original posts can be found here. P. Flickner said, Holy crap, the mom is just like my mom. Covert narcissism. Look it up, it's even more troubling than overt narcissism. Sim Alien Ant Farm said, If that is considered covert, I don't want to know what overt is like. Sundrop T said, There was a family we knew from a while back. They were very nature-loving hippie flower children through the 60s and 70s. Like, changed their last names legally to Ent and Entwife, kind of alternative. And they had six kids. They snapped to it in the 80s and became full yuppie. So five of their kids are basically Bushel, Galadriel, Windcharm, Newleaf, Merlin, etc. And the last one is Amy. We could never tell if she was grateful she dodged a bullet or sad to be left out. Sea Witch added, my Hispanic mother-in-law is super Catholic and named her four kids, in Spanish, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. And then there's Gladys. Even typing that out makes me laugh. Charbot Co. Kitty said, We have some family friends. Bonnie, Connie, Donnie, Lonnie, Ronnie, Bonnie, and Steve. They ran out of letters in the alphabet to continue the Ani theme, apparently. Our third story has me wondering why I didn't make this an entitled parents video. But let's not judge too hastily just from the title. It reads, Am I the butthole for cancelling the plans for Thanksgiving after my parents called my brother's baby their first grandchild? I'm a 32-year-old female and have been with my wife, Ava, 34-year-old female, for eight years now. But we've been married for five. She was a single mom of three kids when we started dating. She had two daughters, now 10 and 12, and a son, now 16. I've watched these kids grow up. I've read the bedtime stories, done bath time, the first days of school, PTA meetings, all of it. I very much consider them to be my kids, and they've been calling me mom for almost six years now. My brother, Ivan, 28-year-old male, just had a baby girl with his fiancée, Sarah, 27-year-old female. I love my niece, and my kids adore their cousin. My kids have been the only grandchildren on my side of the family since Ava and I got together. 
and there's never been a moment where the kids and my wife were treated like they didn't belong. My brother is their uncle, my mom and dad are their nana and pop, the kids see my family as their family, and I always thought my family felt the same way about them. The kids and I were over at my brother's house just hanging out, and my parents ended up dropping by with gifts for my niece. Ivan laughed when he saw the toys and told our mom and dad that they were going to end up spoiling her rotten. My mom said since my niece is their first grandchild, of course they have to spoil her. My kids were sitting in the living room with all of us, and my youngest daughter looked hurt when she realized what my mother said. My son and my 12-year-old didn't fully react to it, but I could tell it bothered the both of them too. Sarah spoke up and said, Oh, you mean first grandbaby, not first grandchild. My dad shook his head and replied that my niece was their first grandchild. I didn't want my kids to keep sitting there and listening to that, so I handed my son my keys and told him to wait in the car with his sisters. When they were gone, I asked my parents why the heck they'd say that my kids weren't their grandchildren. And my mom said they couldn't be their grandchildren because they weren't really my children. My wife and I were going to be hosting Thanksgiving at our house this year. But I told my parents that if they didn't view my kids as their family, then they could just host a meal at their own house with their real family while I spent the holiday with mine. I left before they could say anything else to me, and my wife and I have reiterated to the children that they will always be my kids and I will always be their other mom, regardless of our DNA. My brother is upset at me now because he thinks I reacted too harshly and that I should try to see where my parents are coming from. My mom texted saying that she and my dad love the kids, but they still aren't their grandchildren, and she hopes that we can come to understand that because she doesn't want this to ruin my niece's first Thanksgiving. I haven't replied back. I meant what I said, but I'm worried that maybe I'm reacting too harshly. Edit info. I adopted all three of the kids about four years ago, so they aren't just my parents' step-grandchildren. Even if I hadn't legally adopted them, they'd still be my kids in my eyes. Edit number two. My wife's parents don't have a relationship with the kids. When my wife came out, they pretty much stopped speaking with her entirely. Their bio dad is not involved and neither is his family. He lost his race to the children before Ava and I started dating. The 10-year-old has never met him, the 12-year-old doesn't remember him, and the 16-year-old wants nothing to do with him. My parents wanted the kids to call them Nana and Pop. I didn't make the kids start calling them that. Not the butthole. This story leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I really feel for OP. I mean, this is nuts. What would they say if the child were adopted because their daughter couldn't conceive? Everyone is entitled to their own opinions and thoughts. Full stop. I don't begrudge OP's parents for that. It's not my place. But what benefit is there pushing this? It only alienates these children and creates a family rift. Such a shame. Let's jump to the comments where Redditors delve into the trend of babies first everything. Dart1126 says, Not the butthole. Sister-in-law Sarah is a rock star. She totally tried to save that fumble. Your parents should have picked up on that and caught that pass and saved the situation. Instead, they doubled down and argued the point. That's extremely unfortunate and I'm sorry. Not so average sister added, This response made me think of Ross's dad in the Friends episode where Rachel gives birth. Jack Geller. My first grandchild. Ross. What about Ben? Jack Geller. Well, of course, Ben, I meant my first granddaughter. Nice save, Grandpa Geller. Although, seriously, either Ross is a deadbeat dad to Ben, or the show just decided it was inconvenient to keep writing him and the ex-wife in. Apple Thrower 5000 said, Not the jerk. God forbid they ruin Thanksgiving for the newborn who would definitely rather not go and can't eat any of the food. Wonderful Horror added, I was thinking, when did baby's first Thanksgiving become a thing? Ergern said, it's the same as baby's first Christmas and baby's first birthday. It's purely for the parents and other family. Baby does not care and is not really capable of appreciating it. Hyasathu Sarulistad said, Not the jerk. Your parents seem to be fine letting your kids consider them grandparents for years. Nothing should change just because someone has squirted out a baby they share DNA with. That means this whole time they've really only considered your kids some kind of twisted consolation prize. And, as if that wasn't heartbreaking enough, they decide it's fine to say this with your children in the room? That's absolutely vile. And even if they apologize and backpedal, I think twice about the level of contact and intimacy they're allowed with your children. You did exactly the right thing, and don't let anyone lead you to believe otherwise. Our last story today was the most controversial, as we'll see in the comments at the end. But first, the story. 
Am I the jerk for refusing to pay for my daughter's plane ticket, but paying for my youngest daughter who this vacation is dedicated to? Hello all, I have two daughters named Kate, 23-year-old female, and Alexa, 16-year-old female. For starters, Kate lives with me rent-free and bill-free. She used to live with her mother full-time, but her mom kicked her out at 18. I don't blame her mother, though. Kate was absolutely terrible in her teenage years. She was rude, disrespectful, and would steal, smoke, skip class, etc. Kate barely finished high school and was put in a continuation school. Since this, though, Kate is doing a lot better. She didn't want to go to college, but she works at a fast food restaurant and is saving up for her own apartment. Alexa, on the other hand, is the opposite. She's amazing in school, works, volunteers, and still has time to do sports and clubs. I'm extremely proud of her and feel as if she puts too much pressure on herself. Me and my girlfriend decided to surprise her on a vacation. Alexa has always wanted to go there, and it wasn't as pricey as we expected. We planned this in early October. I told Kate about the vacation and asked if she wanted to come, but she would have to pay her own ticket. She said yes and would give me the money before Halloween. Well, she never gave me the money, even after being reminded. So I booked the trip November 1 for the 18th through 21st of November. I told my daughter this Sunday at dinner and she was very excited. Kate then said, you'll have to cancel and hope they refund. I work those days. I told her she wasn't coming since she didn't pay. She was confused and thought I was paying for her. I told her that she was an adult who worked and lived free. Why would I pay? She got upset and said because I'm her daughter and that I was paying for Alexa, so why not her? An argument then happened which resulted in Alexa and Kate crying and Kate saying she hated me. Kate has been ignoring us until we apologize and pay her ticket, which I won't. Well, yesterday, Alexa sent me a link to a video on TikTok where it shows Kate crying and explaining the situation. But she lied about a lot of things in the videos and made Alexa and I look like bad guys. The video got a lot of attention and support. She even opened up a GoFundMe where she received close to $500. I showed my girlfriend and we were both livid. Alexa was also very upset about the comments, which fueled my anger. When she came home, a huge argument broke out and I basically kicked her out for the week. She's been posting on social media platforms talking about me, my daughter, and girlfriend. My daughter even got some nasty messages on her social media. My girlfriend told me I'm right on this, but my daughter told me to just pay for her ticket. I want to know if I'm doing the right decision, so help. Geez, entitled much? It's so scary when social media is weaponized, especially since it's so easy to modify content to lead people to a false opinion that results in lashing out at people like poor Alexa in this case. I think OP should stand his ground because he's not the jerk. And the flip side of this type of attack on social is that it's typically short-lived. People just tend to keep scrolling. Let's check out what others have to say. I picked some comments from both camps, but no sneaking a peek. Make sure you leave a comment with your judgment beforehand. I am Mr. Spoo said, not the jerk. One daughter is over 18 and has a job. The other is under 18 and in school. It is entirely reasonable to expect one to be able to pay her own way while paying for the one who hasn't had any opportunity to make money for herself. The fact that Kate is willing to lie about you and her sister on the internet for sympathy and money should tell you something about her character. You could even report the GoFundMe as being fraudulent. Sweet Salt 1630 said, Yes, please do report her to GoFundMe. She should not profit from this. Dashcam Kitty added, Who are these people donating? They clearly have too much money. Glitter Doomsday added, a 23-year-old getting money online, who could possibly be donating? Chess Foot said, I wonder how I wonder. Lady Lushkin added, yesterday you told me about the blue, blue sky. Disaster Jones said, it's giving me golden child, black sheep vibes. Reading between the lines tells me that your relationship with the ex-wife was strained, perhaps volatile, and that had an impact on your eldest. Sad that your response to the emotional minefield of adolescent trauma was to ignore and denigrate your child. There are many missing, missing reasons here. Edit. Adding judgment. You are the butthole. Flower17 said, You're the butthole. Quoting, Alexa, on the other hand, is the opposite. She's amazing. You don't even try to hide your favoritism. You don't need to pay for your daughter, although I would for the sake of spending time together as a family. But you're in the wrong for so clearly favoring one child over the other. Kate's surprise also makes me suspect you didn't communicate clearly about your expectations. 
How Kate responded is wrong, but I can understand how she'd feel hurt by her father's very open disappointment in her. If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Thanks, and bye for now.